Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we're going to be talking about mushroom mycotoxins. So if you're ever tempted, you should not ever indulge in tasting or eating a random mushroom that you find in the wild. And the reason for this is that many edible mushrooms have potentially fatal lookalikes. So you shouldn't go mushroom hunting unless you're an expert who's been trained and has not died after eating several mushrooms in the past. Now, if you do this anyway, you'll be doing so at your own peril, because as you'll learn today, many mushrooms have very frightening toxins. So I want to give a shout out to M Fernflower from the Discord for engaging with me in many interesting discussions talking about mushroom mycotoxins, and he is the Discord server's resident mycologist. So the first compound I want to talk about today is cyclopropyl-2-ene carboxylic acid, which I've coined the name of triangulinic acid, and uh, Laz in the Discord suggested tinky winkinic acid due to the resemblance uh, with this Teletubby. And so this this um, mycotoxin didn't have a good name, and so I think you guys can all agree with me or disagree down in the comments that this is an acceptable alternative name. So this mushroom is uh, quite an interesting mushroom. You can see here, this is from the Rusula subnidrans uh, species, and this compound is was identified in 2009. So what happens when you consume this mushroom is it causes rhabdomyolysis, which is the breakdown of skeletal muscles. And the issue here is, aside from breaking down the skeletal muscles, it also causes certain proteins to get taken into the kidneys that are really toxic and can be even fatal, as documented in this paper here. Now one noteworthy thing in the purification of this natural product, as reported in 2009, is they did a unique method of uh, identifying which fractions contained the the mycotoxin. And so what they did is as they had different fractions during their purifications, they were seeing which fractions were toxic to mice and the ones that were the most toxic uh, tended to be the one that they believed to be the mycotoxin, which eventually led them to this structure. They also followed a relatively straightforward synthesis to access this molecule uh, and confirmed that it was indeed the same compound. So kind of interesting, and it's definitely surprising to see such a small, low molecular weight mycotoxin. Definitely interesting. Now the next class of compounds is the eludins, and so you can see here's different uh, structures for the eludins. There's four different uh, discrete molecules. You can see that this is the structure of the mushroom that they come from, the eastern jack-o'-lantern mushroom. And these compounds are actually promising as they show anti-tumor properties uh, due to their genotoxicity. So kind of an interesting uh, class of molecules. Definitely interesting to see this warhead cyclopropane motif, as well as some interesting alkenes that would be challenging to synthesize, to say the least. Now the next class of compounds I want to talk about are ibotenic acid and muscimol. And so these are quite well known due to the presence in uh, Amanita muscaria, the classic Mario mushroom that you see in oh so many places. And ibotenic acid, the amino acid here, is actually a prodrug for muscimol, but it also has its own discrete activity at the NMDA glutamate receptors. Uh, once muscimol is formed, either through the drying of the mushrooms or through the enzymatic processes converting ibotenic acid into muscimol, it's actually a potent GABA-A agonist. And so this is uh, active as a sedative or a, myco uh, or a psychoactive mycotoxin. And so kind of interesting, there's also been medicinal chemistry campaigns to make analogs of these that would have therapeutic value, but unfortunately they've been abandoned. Now the next molecule I want to talk about is coprene. And coprene has this really interesting um, hemiaminal cyclopropane motif. And so this is the common ink cap, the mushroom that it comes from, one of the mushrooms that it comes from. And the interesting thing is that these mushrooms are actually edible. However, when you consume them with alcohol, they become toxic. And this is an effect that can even take up to three days uh, to occur, like before all of the mycotoxin is broken down. And the reason for this is that the active metabolite, this amino uh, cyclopropanol, is actually a potent acetaldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor. So when your body is breaking down ethanol, initially the ethanol is oxidized into acetaldehyde. And if the acetaldehyde can't be broken down, it can be really toxic. And so this is an issue if you're consuming this common ink cap, even if it's cooked uh, along with alcohol. So it's definitely something you want to avoid. This results in a symptom known as disulfiram syndrome, which is a drug used to treat uh, chronic alcoholism. It's quite interesting. These symptoms can occur even if a small amount of alcohol is consumed up to three days after eating the mushrooms, although they are milder as more time passes. Quite interesting, and it's definitely surprising to see something uh, as small as this to be so active. It's definitely really interesting. Okay, so the next molecule is muscarin, and this is quite a common molecule. This has been well studied for quite a long time. I think this was actually discovered in the 1800s, 
And so this is present in many mushrooms, although most of the mushrooms that contain it that are commonly consumed don't have it in concerning amounts. It's in really uh, low abundance. However, there's some mushrooms that have it as much as like 1% or 2% of the dry weight of the mushrooms. And so this is present in lethal amounts potentially in the ivory funnel mushroom, as shown here. And it's active at muscarinic acetylcholine receptors as an agonist, and hence the name of the receptor that it targets, muscarinic, it's actually the compound that gives that receptor its name. So muscarine is a nerve agent, and if you ever get poisoned with it, they can treat it with anti-muscarinics, anti-muscarinics such as atropine, uh, which is uh, another plant alkaloid, which has the opposite effect. So quite interesting. Now the next two molecules I want to talk about are psilocybin and psilocin. These are well-known molecules even by non-experts as they're present in mushrooms from the genus psilocybe, which are commonly known as magic mushrooms. Here we have a picture of psilocybe cubensis, which are these interesting looking mushrooms here, which someone's grown on a medium. And psilocybin is believed to be a prodrug for psilocin, which is this other molecule here. You could just see the hydrolysis of this phosphate would uh, afford psilocin. Now, it might be that the mushroom produces psilocybin because it has more stability than psilocin. You can see this is a really electron-rich arene, both from the indole and from the hydroxy group. So it definitely could uh, undergo some subsequent chemistry. And this is a, a psychoactive substance at the 5-HT2A receptor, which is a serotonin 2A receptor. Now it's also active towards other receptors, but it's believed that the majority of its pharmaco, uh, pharmacological properties are due to the interaction with 5-HT2A. So this is another interesting class of mycotoxins. Now the next compound I wanna talk about is orlanonine. So orlanonine is this interesting diquat-like compound. You can see paraquat is this pesticide that's also active against people, and so it's kind of toxic. But here you can see, instead of having these methyl groups, we have an NOH, a pyridinium N oxide, as well as some other substituents on the pyridine rings, and some changes in the uh, locations of where the the dimer is located. So you can see these are in the deadly web cap mushrooms. These are quite terrifying. Now, uh, the interesting thing is that these charged pyridines can disrupt cellular redox processes, which is definitely undesirable. And it turns out that there isn't really any way to treat poisoning once it's occurred, other than the management of symptoms. So you can see that orlanonine is actually a potent nephrotoxin, rest in peace kidneys, and it can take as long as three weeks before symptoms appear. And so that's actually pretty scary. So if you have a good uh, hospital and some good care, you might be able to manage some of the some of the kidney failure, although it's it's not uh, it's not great for a lot of these. The prognosis is not great after poisoning already occurs. Now the next compound is agratinine or agratinine, and this is present in many common mushrooms, including the common white cap that you might get at your grocery store if you're buying white mushrooms. And so you might be wondering, whoa, 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 hold up. We're getting stuff that has a mycotoxin in it, and fortunately, it seems to be like not an issue even in the dry mushroom, even if you haven't cooked it but cooking does reduce the levels of this chemical by up to 90%. It's also hydrolytically unstable, so if it's present in a solution of water, it tends to hydrolyze. Um, although there's been some studies with mice showing that it is a carcinogen. Now, the toxicity in humans hasn't been well studied, and this is definitely an area of research that should be investigated somewhat further, especially due to its presence in common mushrooms. Now, another interesting molecule is the amatoxins. And so amatoxins have this interesting cyclic peptide motif, where you can see this whole thing is cyclic, but it's also further cyclized through this very odd sulfoxide indole motif. And so you can see there's several red substituents here where there could be different groups depending on which amatoxin uh, is being, uh, or amatoxin rather, is uh, being discussed. And you can see that once this gets into your body, there's not a whole lot that can be done. So interestingly, you look at the death cap here, these small spooky looking mushrooms can be uh, quite deadly. There are uh, other mushrooms that contain these types of toxins and they are terrible because you usually die from hepatitis followed by liver failure and kidney failure. And there doesn't really seem like it can be treated, although it's possible that some symptoms could be managed. So hopefully what you've taken away from all of this is that mushrooms can contain very interesting looking structures that could definitely be fatal if you eat the wrong one. So the takeaway is you should buy mushrooms from your grocery store or you should definitely have a mycologist examine the mushrooms very thoroughly before you ever consume anything. So hopefully this has been an interesting video on mycotoxins. If you like this style of content, make sure you let me know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell and I hope you have a great day.